Can you hear me okay down there? No? Just about. I saw one, it was only just about. Am I switched on? Yeah, that's all right. This is the final one, isn't it? The questions. Yeah, this is the uh, final of the questions that, that Jesus asked of uh, those that are around. And uh, the question uh, before us this morning that Jesus asked Peter was, Simon, son of John, do you tr truly love me more than these? And uh, before we can answer that question, I would like us to go back a few days um, to where Jesus was talking to his disciples and telling them what was going to happen in the next few days. How that he would be taken, how that he would be taken by wicked men, he would be tried and he would be crucified. But, uh, and Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. See, Jesus knew what was going to happen. Peter didn't, but Jesus did. The Bible doesn't read, uh, uh, Jesus knew what was going to happen, but, Jesus, uh, but Peter said, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and even to death. So Peter was making this bold statement to Jesus in a way of trying to defend him and saying, look, I'll protect you. I'll even go to prison for you. I'll even die for you. And Jesus said, I'll tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And we don't get in the Bible the answer that, Je that Peter said to Jesus about that. But it must have blown him away and thinking, well, I promised to do that. But Jesus said something different was going to happen. So Jesus had been taken by the scribes and the Pharisees and the, the, the re religious rulers of the day. And the disciples did a runner. So much for Peter saying, Lord, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But he did a runner. And, uh, you know, we, we identify with Peter sometimes, don't we? Because he is the one that kind of opens his mouth and puts his foot in it. And I've done that a few times. Um, you know, we make these promises, I'm going to do this or do that. Uh, and then for some reason or other, uh, maybe because of old age we forget. And uh, just a few weeks ago, beginning of January, we do a um, Sunday afternoon tea at church. We also, before that, we go to an old people's home and do a service in there. And after the morning service, uh, this lady that comes to our church said, I'd love to come to the tea this afternoon. She said, but I've got nobody to bring me. And I thought, hang on, can I work this out? If I come, uh, yeah, it's all right. I said, I'll pick you up. She said, yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, I'll pick you up. So uh, I went home to lunch and I went back to, um, to the old people's home. We went back to the church and we were sitting down and I was going off speaking at uh, another church in the evening. And so I thought, right, I've got to go now, and I went. And on Tuesday morning, I was praying, doing my bowl reading and praying, and this came into my, oh no, I forgot to pick that lady up for the tea. And I, I felt absolutely gutted, because I'd made this promise that I would do this thing, and I thought, what am I going to do? What am I going to say to her? So uh, we have a Bible study on the Thursday, on the Wednesday morning. So I was at the Bible study, and uh, one of the ladies said, "You forgot to pick um, this lady up, didn't you?" I said, "Yeah, I know. I feel really. It's all right," she said. Andy went and picked her up. Oh. Another fellow in the church had heard us make this conversation, <coughs> knew that I'd promised this. She wasn't there, and it was only up there. So, went, so I had to ring this lady up, and this girl on the Wednesday morning told me she's really angry with you, <laughs> really, really angry. I thought, what am I going to do? So I went around to see a lot. I said, I'm really sorry. I said, it's all right, forget it. She said, I made it, didn't I? Somebody picked me up. So this girl was just trying to stir it, you know, <laughs> to a bit naughty in a way. But, um, yeah, we do make these promises, but when push comes to shove, sometimes, you know, we, we don't carry out what we said we'd do. And so the, Jesus has been taken, and uh, Peter and all the other disciples, they've done a run, even though Peter took his sword out and tried to protect Jesus, but... That didn't happen anyway. But then Peter, he followed. He went to where they'd taken Jesus. And he was warming himself by the fire. And Jesus was just a short distance away. Somebody came up, Peter, you're one of them, aren't you? You're one of his disciples. 
No, I'm not. Somebody else. Okay, well, Peter, you're one of them, aren't you? No, no, I'm not one of them. Third time, somebody came up and said, you're one of them, aren't you? You're one of Jesus' followers. And Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the cock crowed. And the Bible says, Jesus turned and looked at Peter. And I love that. Because I don't think Jesus said, nah, I told you, I knew you'd do that. I think Jesus, if he could have done, he would have gone over to Peter and he put his arms around him and gave him a hug. And said, look, it's okay. We know what's going to happen. This is all part of the plan. This is all part of God's purpose. And he says that Peter went out. Oh, sorry, uh, then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Uh, you were his homie three times and he went out and he wept bitterly. You know, and Peter went out, he realised that he'd let his Lord Jesus down. He hadn't carried out what he said he would do. A couple of days, a day later, or three days later, Jesus, Peter went to the tomb with John. And it says that John went into the tomb and he went away and he believed. And Peter went away wondering what had happened. I've blown it. I've let the Lord down. I haven't carried out and done what I said I would do. What's going to happen to me now? And what did Peter say? Uh, he said, um, let's go fishing. That's what I know to do. That's how I know to occupy my time. Let's go fishing. And so they went on the Sea of Galilee. And they went fishing, doing what Peter knew what to do with these other disciples. And then on the shore, they see somebody. And he shouts, caught any fish? And now we've been here all night, caught a thing. Put your net on the other side. They put the net on the other side of the boat and 153 fish. Why they give you that number, I don't know. There must be some specific reason, I don't know. There must be some technical no, reason why it's there, but I don't know. Some people have come up with some ideas, but I don't go down that road. And so uh, they caught 153 fish. And Jesus said, Bring, uh, John said, it is the Lord. And in Peterfield, I don't want to meet him. I've let him down. I don't want to see him. But Jesus said, no, bring the fish that you've caught. Let's have a meal together. Let's have time together. And I, I think when Jesus said, bring the fish you have caught, well, yeah, they'd caught it, but who was the instigator of it? Jesus. He told them what to do. And they were just obedient to it. And they pulled the fish on the shore. How did feel Peter feel in the presence of the Lord? We're not told, really, but in John chapter 21, it says, When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. When Jesus was asking Peter, do you love me? We have one word for love. You know, I, I love my wife. I love driving a car. I love having ice cream on a hot day. But, but does it all mean the same depth of love? Do I love my wife as much as I love an ice cream? I hadn't better say that, had I? Because <laughs> I'm already trolling in anyway because I told her that her toast weren't toasted enough this morning. But in the Greek, there are about eight words for the word love. Um, I'm just going to share four of them. Um, eros is a romantic love. But I understand that's not mentioned in the Bible, the word eros, as in romantic love. Stoops, I think this is storage, or S-T-O-R-G-E, storage. That's a family love. And then filio is a brotherly love. And agape is an unconditional love. And so when Jesus asked Peter, do you truly love me? 
he's asking him, Agape, do you love me more than these? Now, what does he mean by these? Does he mean your fishing? Does he mean the disciples, the friends that he's got? I, I don't know. But what Jesus is saying to Peter, do you love me more than anything else? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. He's using the filio. Yes, I love you like a brother. So why does Jesus ask Peter three times? Is it because he denied him three times? Or is it because Jesus wants to move Peter from the filio love, a brotherly love, and bring him to that agape love, that unconditional love? Lord, I love you more than anything because you've done so much for me. Um, so then, what difference did it make to Peter? What difference did it make to his life? We've seen that when he was challenged in the, in the, um, in the, the courtyard of the temple, that, that he refused to believe or belong to Jesus or be associated with him. But after the resurrection, after Jesus had spoken to him, after he received the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter stood up in front of hundreds of people and he said, you men, you took Jesus. You had him crucified and we're testimony to that. What made him from that coward in a way to be that strong person who would stand up? Peter replied, we must obey God rather than men. He wasn't ashamed of knowing in the Lord Jesus of himself. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of Jesus. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching or proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. So to answer the question that Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? I think we can give it a resounding yes. Jesus did love Jesus. And he was willing to be beaten and go to prison. But then, um, at the end of this uh, verses, Jesus said, told Peter to follow him. But then it says, Peter says, what about him? It seems as though John was following behind. So I like to think that when, after the, the breakfast, Jesus took Peter for a walk. Uh, and I think Peter said, this is it, I'm going to get both barrels now. Jesus is going to really... <laughs> And nothing of the sort. Jesus found out that Peter really loved him. And in verse 20 of John 21, Peter asked Jesus, what about him, the disciple who was following him? And Jesus said, it's not your problem. Your problem is to follow me. Your problem is to love me. Maybe we love Jesus with that filial love, as a brotherly love. But what Jesus wants to do is to encourage us to go into that agape love, to the, uh, make uh, an agape love, an unconditional love, that we love Jesus with all that we've got and all that he's given us, we can return to him because of that. The Bible says, the Son of God, who is Jesus, who loved me and gave himself for me. When Jesus died on the cross, he was showing that love for all. And as Peter responded to that question, do you love me? So we have to respond to that question ourselves. Do we love Jesus? Do we thank him for what he's done for us? And as I was sitting there and we were singing in that first uh, song, what gift of grace is Jesus my redeemer? I thought that could really be Peter's testimony. How that he knew the change that had made in his life. And we can know that change too. So that song can be our testimony. Let's have a short prayer and then we'll sing our last song. Father, we thank you for this time. I've been